Now, Kendall, giving you some time. Maybe we should get into some Naheem Hines film. Well, that kind of rhymed a little bit, but let's pull it up for the shiny new toy for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, so right here, uh, I pulled about four. No, I got four plays on Naheem Hines, two runs, two passes, just from this past week against the Commanders. And we picked these um, four because they are representative of who he is as a player. These are not cherry-picked. These aren't random. These aren't one-off things that he doesn't do regularly or only happen because he was in the Colts offense. We picked these because they are representative of who he is as a player. Yeah, so these these are his his best plays in this game, but they are still representative, like you said. I'm not gonna sit here and show you guys one yard runs, um, but on we this show play, a play where he like throws right. the ball, and we're like, all he does is throw the ball. This like, is what he does. QB. Expect this. <laughs> it's actually funny because his first play, he's wildcat quarterback. So obviously, <laughs> everyone only wildcat. <laughs> everyone knows what's going on with the Colts. You know, they bench Matt Ryan. Sam Ellinger is the quarterback now. I'm sure they they did a bunch of this in this game, you know, where you know you got to find some way to have some offense. So Naheem yeah. Hines, Wildcat quarterback on this play, and I mean, you just you, you see him with the just really designed quarterback run essentially, and then just the fake handoff to the reverse man, and then just take it up the boundary. Uh, a big, really keying in point with this is just the idea of his speed to get to the edge because speed is a big part of his game. It's going to be that kind of running style when you think about him, similar to how we were actually breaking down um, McKissick this offseason. Funny mm -hmm. how it's all coming full circle. But Although I do think he's a bit of a different runner, especially yes. with the, the, the speed to power aspect in his yes. game than J.D. McKissick. I don't want but, to somebody comment in the chat or that they're the same. They are different. No, they are different. But I think there's a, similar, a similarity in the sense that they aren't, true between the tackle runners like they can do it it's something that they're capable of but they have a tendency to want to bounce it outside because of that skill set of what mm. they can do in open space and yes they have the short area quickness but around all those big bodies you kind of get eaten up pretty quickly so this is a more of a focal point of his skill set getting to the edge forcing defenses to play laterally and can they match his speed and is he going to bust up angles with that speed his speed is real 4.38 and I'm not, I'm not a, I know you aren't as well. We're not all about like, well, if they run a good 40 time, that means they're fast. There's a, you I can mean, battle Matt Breida. 40 time. Matt Breida. Um, well, Matt Breida's fast. Um, Gabe no, Davis. I'm saying like speed, there's more to just speed. Oh, most definitely. Look at Gabe Davis, like 4.54, 40 beats everybody vertically all the time. Like there's a lot to it. Mm -hmm. um, Naheem Hines is, so he's got the long speed. He can house he's like a house call waiting and he, a punt return, kick return runs passes. He's got long speed, but he's also got that short area burst. And I, and I said, speed to power. It's something I've kind of been ever since really studying the Ravens offense and looking at Patrick Ricard, like I've become not obsessed, but very cognizant of the idea of, you know, speed to power is used for defensive linemen in terms of how they rush, but I've kind of become more cognizant of like speed to power from an offensive standpoint, whether it's a blocker or a runner and, you know, Naheem Hines has the ability to, again, convert that speed to power. He's got a low center of gravity. He's short, but he's compact. He's muscular. He he's got a good frame. He's not easy to bring down. And you can see in the movements here, like once he puts that foot in the ground, like he's got that explosion. He puts that right foot, gets a couple gather steps, and you see him just burst and he gets up field. He showcases that ability time and time again in a variety of ways in this offense. I think that is what, that's what I'm most excited about, like, He's a good receiver coming out of the backfield with option routes and understanding coverages and how to leverage things and yada, yada. But having more juice and more pop mm -hmm. into this offense, it's part of the reason why we were excited to have James Cook because holistically, you, you've got Isaiah McKenzie, who's got that short area quickness and burst, and Diggs has it a little bit, but you can always add more juice to the offense. And this was an area that the Bills were lacking in times last year it's nice to get another dude with pop, especially at a position where they traditionally haven't had it. Singletary is more quick than he is fast, but not a ton of juice. Moss isn't wasn't a juice guy. James Cook is, but it was still Cook versus the other two. Now you had another dude with this dynamic, versatile skill set combined with that juice and pop and physical traits. And it's something nice to see. And um, again, I like how you mentioned, you know, I don't think he's a bad in between the tackles runner, but he will look to push this outside and right. get vertical. But I like in this instance, he didn't push it too hard. He sees the corner, recognizes that back. the cutback is there. Yeah. So he's like, okay, I want to push it outside. Crap, I can't. 
Mm-hmm. Let me get upfield. And then you even see once he puts that foot in the ground, he gets upfield in the hurry and he has the guys bring him down, but he falls forward. It's because of that strength, that contact balance, speed to but, power. But it all tied, yeah, speed to power, and it all ties to that, that burst and that quickness that he has. Yep, 100%. Another example here, we're going to get him. This is a bit of the gadgetry, too. You see him start out wide yes. here, and then they split him back in to the backfield with a split back set, quickly snap it, and then you have Jonathan Taylor as your lead blocker. Didn't really need to do much, but gets in front of his man, and it's it's really a walk-in touchdown here. But the key on this play is really the gadgetry. It, mm-hmm. it's, it's, I mean, really well-designed play, ironically, for the offensive coordinator that just got fired for the Colts. <laughs> and, <laughs> Great play design. You're out. I mean, it, it was a good play design. I mean, it was walk-in touchdown uh but yeah no this this goes to show once again speed to get to the outside you see montez sweat let's see if i can get that right montez sweat mm-hmm. super athletic edge very long too. he's got yeah, like, like, to get hurry. it's not necessarily easy to run around this guy he does get a little bit narrow down here he probably should be pushing up more this way but either way heinz very lateral with his motion even with the handoff you can see his aiming point he is pretty much parallel to that yard line right there gets across the face of sweat. And at that point it's a walk-in touchdown because of the speed that he possesses. And of course, like I said, the play design, the lead block from Jonathan Taylor to get out there. But this goes to show once again, he's going to be a threat on outside runs, Mm -hmm. not to say he's not on inside runs, but I think this is more of his bread and butter, more of the way that he can stress defenses and kind of stretch them to even open up the middle of the field for, the passing game through RPO runs and stuff or RPO passes Mm. off this type of run action. So I think there's a lot that he can add in the run game, not nearly as much that he adds in the passing game uh, because that's, that's truly his bread and butter, but there's still stuff here that you can take away and chalk up to be an upgrade. And in an addition Mm. to this room, I think you, you hit a really cool nail on the head with that RPO piece because it's, it's such a, it's such a different dynamic when you're running this type of action with Sam Ellinger in Indianapolis versus running with Josh Allen in right. Buffalo. And if you've got a running back who is a legitimate threat on the perimeter, it makes that defense pause a little bit. It creates a little more consternation. It creates a little hesitation. It creates that half second hesitation in your brain where you're like, Oh, what do I have to honor in your beat? So anytime you're adding somebody again, who can threaten the perimeter, who has that real juice and that real speed like Naheem Hines does. And we're showcasing on this play. It's very real. Um, but again, it also it gives you that ability to continue to threaten that perimeter. So if you need to, you can puncture the defense back inside in a variety of ways, whether it's with the running back, whether it's with the quarterback on a variety of ways, whether you want to run power read or just traditional pin and pull, or it's an RPO, whatever I have you, it continues to allow you know the Bills to do something that we've, we've used this phrasing before, accessing more of the menu without having mm-hmm. to turn the page. Um, and so again, nice little weapon, very, very much in that mold of, I don't want people to think like, well, Isaiah McKenzie could do this. It's got a different feel when Naheem Hines is there. Um, but you will see some of that action, the jet sweeps, the orbit motions, little bubble screens, lining up in the backfield, running a choice route. But because he can do it as a traditional running back, it does different things to the defense in terms of how they're going to align, what type of personnel they're going to match with. It's another chess piece option. Yeah, I think it's it's just a hair more versatile than McKenzie because of that, like you said, traditional running back skill set just off the basis of like if you were to motion mckenzie in the backfield 90 percent of the time or 95 98 99 it's not going to be a run if you motion naheem hines you it could be like at worst as an offensive play caller you're not afraid to give him the football in that scenario and as a defender you have to honor well it could be a run because he's actually a running back or it could be a pass because he's phenomenal in that way bingo 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 Bingo. but it was fixed now well done yeah, I know. It was the first time I've ever actually fixed it on air. It's I didn't fine. think it was going to work, but it did. Yeah, Look yeah, it took a little bit of time. Growing up um, so I really should have circled Naheem Hines on these, but I believe he is this guy right here. Beautiful circle, by the way. That's a whore. That's like a reverse <laughs> G. But it works. Uh, but you see him lined up in the slot, and this is, like I said, more of the bread and butter, more of what you're expecting from Naheem Hines. And he's lined up against, I believe it's uh, Jamin Davis from Kentucky a few years ago, their mm-hmm. first round pick in Washington. But this is the idea. You know, you get running backs on the field, you line them up in the slot, you're ideally going to have a linebacker on him or maybe a safety, but ideally a linebacker. And it's actually amazing that you get this all caught in the end zone camera, but you can see him right here. 
And the way he works this route, obviously inside leverage here on the out route, he just kind of sets it up even more towards the inside to create as much separation and room towards the boundary gets up field a little bit and then just shakes the outside. I, I think the impressive part about this too is like, this was somewhat of a contested catch. This wasn't like an open window catch for him. You can see Davis's mm -hmm. arm in there in the catch point, and he still makes a good catch on the sideline, gets a nice chunk of yardage there. So really solid in the passing game. I think this is like an ex exemplary, mm. I can't even say the word. Exemplary, I got you. Yeah, I, thank you. It's only but Tuesday, it, but it's been a long week for both of us. Right? Um, but I think this really goes to show even just the nuances of it. Very simple play, but I mean, this is what you're going to get from Naheem Hines. Mm -hmm. Like very, very basic, but consistent in the passing game mm -hmm. like you know what you're gonna get from this guy and you see it here just clinical work setting him up and then breaking to the outside sure-handed catch this is a good route if you if you notice off the line of scrimmage um whether you're seeing it on the sideline whether you're seeing it in, from the end zone angle you'll see him kind of stem this route inside a little bit mm -hmm. to give himself more room to operate on the outside. So look at his first couple steps and his body language and his lean like he comes off the line and he's attacking that inside and what does Jamin Davis do? He sets up like he's going to wall him off and be that player. Then Hines gets upfield, gets a nice subtle hand on him to separate a little bit, but not enough to push off and have it be an issue. Fights through the hand, shows the ability to fight through contact, maintain separation, and then you get that jitterbug type of cut where the real quick suddenness, that's an aspect I really like of, of in his game, whether he's running routes, whether it's with the ball in his hands. He's got that sharpness. And he's got that suddenness to his game mm -hmm. um, with that power and that explosion in his feet, his ankles, his hands, his hips, all that kind of stuff. So this is this is a nice route. Again, it's subtle. It's easy. But this is, this is you checking the easy button if you're Josh Allen, right? Like you have your receiving running back threat lined up in the slot against the linebacker. For, mo for most teams, most teams, even if you have two like nickel linebackers and you play nickel, most of the time that's a mismatch if it's a running back on a linebacker in that regard, let alone with how the Colts are able to use them and what they were able to do. So I think this is a potential blueprint, what you could see from Naheem Hines with the Buffalo Bills. And if we're looking at things from a, a production standpoint in terms of percentages, 21.3% of his snaps have been in the slot. That's his second year with over 20% of his receiving snares, pass snaps in the slot. Last year was at 23.2. What's also very interesting is if you look at his um, – his route percentage on pass snaps, he's running routes 94.4% of the time on pass snaps. So when he's in there on a passing down, he's in there to run a route because of what he can do, because of what his skill set is and the traits that he has. Again, chess pieces, mismatch opportunity. And it's not just because like, well, he's fast. He's got some technical prowess and refinement to his game. Um, he increases the floor for that position and what you're looking for out of that role. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I think, honestly, I'm I'm really intrigued to get more time and dive into his slot snaps against zone coverage. I want to see what he looks like versus mm -hmm. zone. Can he leverage, leverage that spacing, sit out, sit down in spots and make life easy for quarterbacks? Obviously, we see here rep and man. I want to see what it looks like against zone. But, I mean, time will tell. I don't, I don't necessarily have all the time in the world four hours after the trade deadline to go and find those reps. But it is an intriguing point for me because I believe, I mean, that's something we've kind of been missing in this Bills offense. You know, you kind of put Stephon Diggs into the the slot role against zone and that works, but does McKenzie have that kind of prowess against zone coverage from the slot? So that, that kind of thing, I don't want to sit here and say he's a Cole Beasley, Cole Beasley replacement, but you could get, you know, a percentage of that against zone type of looks from him. Hmm. So curious to see how that works out. But curious. next play here lined up in the backfield. I'm going to use the actual circle here. You didn't want to um, go with your reverse G again? No, no, okay. didn't go Fair well enough. the first time. Fair Learn enough. from your mistakes. Um, Sound scout. Mm -hmm, you better mm -hmm. study the tape, literally. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see him in the backfield here. But what I really like about this, this is a wheel route that he's going to haul in a pretty, pretty big reception here on the sideline. Really nice hands catch there. Really great throwing ball once again, mm -hmm. matched up against Davis. Um, but the thing I'd like to key in on specifically on this route, and I think this is something that I mean, a lot I know a lot of people are talking about 
the redundancy that there is between Hines and James Cook. I think there's a lot that James Cook could learn from Hines. Yes. And yes, there's a redundancy there, but perhaps there's more than that. Yes, that overlap is there, but Cook can learn from that overlap. Mm -hmm. A guy that's done it before, a guy that knows the tricks and trades of this business, what he's doing specifically in that niche role of running back. So I think Cook can learn a lot from this, but watch how, Hines sets up the linebacker here on this wheel route. He knows the route he wants to get to, but he makes it look like it's going to be a Texas or an angle route right there. Gives himself right that space the, again, like we saw in the exactly. previous play. He's setting the illusion of speed. Even though he has speed, he's setting it up. Yeah. So he shows right here, like this is that point where he's kind of setting up this linebacker to once again, flip his hips in this direction where he's kind of walling off the angle mm -hmm. route in this direction here. And then once you see the linebacker has committed to this or has gone flat footed enough, put your foot in the dirt, get right past him. And this is something, I mean, we've seen from James Cook so far this year when he wants to leak out of the backfield like this on these wheel routes, these, these linebackers are just getting hands on him and essentially pushing him down to the turf. This is a way to kind of set it up to kind of give yourself a free release into the route. And what's also beautiful about this is because he gives this, this route time to breathe and develop the coverage over the top fully clears out. Yeah. So this is, this is a zone coverage, but because of, of Heinz's pacing to this route, he essentially isolates that linebacker in coverage against him and creates a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. So you look at the corner, you look at the shell up top, they got a too high shell. And then you watch the coverage, those boundary, that boundary corner and that boundary safety there they go. They clear. And effectively, he's just got one-on-one -on -one man coverage with no help over the top against the linebacker. And that is pure mismatch every day. So it's a good understanding. It's a good play design and call, first and foremost, again, for this offensive coordinator that it no longer has a job. But it's good pacing and understanding by Naheem Hines of what he needs to do to win on this route. Because, it, yeah. again, it's not just enough to be fast or be big or be quick. Like, you have to know how to use – your speed or your quickness or your, you not be able to play to your strengths and mitigate your weaknesses. You need to know how to play football. And the route that we showed on the previous play, along with this route, mm -hmm. you're seeing him set up those defenders and put them in disadvantageous positions because of his football IQ and knowing how to win and how to set defenders up for failure and set himself up for success. Again, quality route, knowing God knows everybody and their mother sees that Texas route or that angle route coming out mm -hmm. of the backfield or that option route or choice right. route a million times. And even with the way the linebacker is playing it, right, it could be an option route to the point where he's either going to go inside or he's going to go outside. And maybe it's just going to be more of a flat route and the linebacker set it up so he can take that angle. But instead, Hines lets everything clear on the back end and just turns it into basically like a rail route or a wheel route, gets up the sideline and then a good enough throw. But look at him locate that ball yeah. like a center fielder on like this over. angle. It's beautiful. Like this is legitimately over his head. He tracks it. This is fantastic hand-eye coordination. This is a receiver level catch. And then yep. it's carrying him out of bounds. Watch him get his feet down and make sure he tip taps the feet. That's a real quality play. So we've got physical ability. We've got traits. We've got skill set. But he's also got that nuance. He's got that understanding in his game. Um, again, this isn't, this isn't a regular occurrence for most NFL running backs. Like if this is, I don't want to say special, but this is a real high quality play. It's mm -hmm. a high quality aspect of his game in an area that makes him, um, very, very, very dangerous. And real quick, I wanted to mention a piece, uh, Rashad McGinnis, who is all into the Colts and one of the dudes I trust most. He, he's just good in football in general, um, but especially with covering the Colts. I reached out to him today, uh, to get some thoughts on Mr. Naheem Hines, uh, and see, here's some of the things he mentioned. He said, quote, he's the dream back on third downs. He's not great in pass protection. This is for you down there in the chat, Matthew. He's not great in pass protection, but he's solid enough. He's absolutely electric in the open field as a runner. He tends to bounce things. This is funny, Kendall. He tends to bounce <laughs> things to the outside a lot. But if there's open field, he's a threat to go the distance. Outstanding as a receiver, whether lining up in the backfield or in the slot, great hands and short area quickness. Also an asset on special teams. He's been a really good punt returner throughout his career. The cherry on top is that he's a great locker room guy. Y'all are going to love him in Buffalo. Um, again, I, I thought the cherry on top was going to be the punt returning. No locker room stuff, which is, which is, yeah. I mean, I, we should know already like culture right. to kind of guys. The yeah, box. Yes. Exactly. Um, but yeah, huge shout out to, uh, 
Mr. Rashad McGinnis. Uh, his name is King of Colts on uh, hmm. Twitter. But yeah, absolutely a phenomenal follow. Dude knows ball um, in a variety of ways. And yeah, I, you know, we, you've watched tape of, of Hines and the Colts and as have I, but he's watched way more than either of us with how much oh, he yeah. the Colts. So I thought it was, I thought it was fun too, to know that what we're watching, granted, I think we watch as much as we can to really be able to build that sample size in order to have a proper opinion and a proper analysis on these right. players. But it was nice to see that someone who goes in depth, in depth with the Colts had similar sentiments and echoed those thoughts. Cause what it means is when you're watching those games, those flashes that you're seeing are not just flashes. They're Mm -hmm. consistent aspects of his game. And the fact that he can flash consistently, like that's a really nice piece. There's a reason why, again, not that fantasy is real life football. There's a reason Naheem Hines has been drafted consistently over the last several years. 2018, he had over 60 receptions. He had 64, which was the eighth most. Uh, In 2020, he had 63, which is the third most receptions for a running back. So the eighth most receptions for a running back as a rookie, the third most. A couple of years ago, he's a versatile piece. He's a weapon. I'm also interested to see what he could do if they go, you know, like what the Colts are doing with him and Taylor, that pony personnel with two traditional running backs. I think we're going to see that. What I think we're going to see that. What, him and Singletary could be fun, but him and James Cook. I think that's atrocious? what it's going to be. I think it's going to be those two specifically. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think as we get towards the the, late, the later end of the yeah. season, I think we're going to see a lot of a lot of split back with mm-hmm. Cook and Hines on the field at the same time. I mean, that's you just could. a nightmare for defense. What do you do? How do you match it with personnel? Yeah. What type of formations do you get to with the Bills? If you get something that works, do you go no huddle? I like um I like this comment here too. Saying uh, he, this comment was made when we were talking about Cook mm. pacing his route. Yeah, the pacing. The, uh, yep. Yeah, the comparison is like a, a basketball point Someone's guard changing slow gears playing fast. their their dribble moves and as that's they drive. so important. Yep. Like you you have to. Getting vertical or just winning routes in general, like, but especially not just vertical. about the Correct. John Ross straight down no, the field. We use that example all the time. Sorry, John Ross, I mean, but it's, it's not just about point. burning up the field. No, like, you need to know how to yeah. pace. Nice you need to have that nuance. Khalil Shakir is a tremendous example. His college tape that we poured over, mm-hmm. he gets vertical not because he's a straight burner. Yes, he's fast, but he knows how to lie and sell so and build deception. Bit, yes, you, know. you have to have those multiple gears. And it's very simple. Like, the point guards who get to the paint and drive to the bucket, Chris Paul isn't the fastest point guard, but he knows how to pace. He knows when to attack. He knows how to operate with burst. He knows how to set you up and then bang and it hits you. And that's the thing. The short area quickness mixed with gear changing, nightmare for defense. There's What do you do? do? You do? not No one in the world with a pairing of of short area quickness and gear changing like that, no one, no defender in the world has that sort of reactive athletic. No, and especially, especially... When who's going to probably be that defender covering him? A linebacker. Right. Big right. mismatch. Big mismatch. Real quick, some questions from the chat. Connor says, mm-hmm. is Hines serviceable between the tackles for about 8 to 12 carries? Um, I don't know if we can put a number on it, but I think from Kendall and I, I think, yes, he he would be serviceable. I think that's a very good way to put it. He's not deficient between the tackles. That's not his strength or his strong suit, but he could work there unless Kendall if I No, if I, had, I, I think that's spot on. If I had to put numbers on it, like a carry count per game, I would lower that margin to like, I was say five to eight. I was going to say most. four, four to six is what okay. I would be, especially in this offense too. Yes. Like, I don't know if we even want to see most running backs getting that many. Singletary had a ton of work this past week and he had 14 carries. Exactly. And he's so, RB1. So exactly. Use that as your, your barometer here. So I think four to six ballpark. That's how many we're really going to want to see him getting his hands on the football traditionally and as a running back. Yeah, I, I think that's spot on. And then, you know, as Chris says, yeah, that is a nightmare. Exactly. Yeah, there is a lot to like <laughs> um, Pete's comment as well, like that we didn't have to give up, up so much that we're obligated to keep him beyond the season. Um, he's due 4.5 and 5.1 the next two. He's not guaranteed the next Correct. two seasons there is an either. So the Bills there is an have out after this year. Stability after this season. So if so. they want to, if they want to, you know, cut ties and then bring on Bijan Robinson, <clears throat> do it. That would be fantastic. Chris, starting it early. <laughs> I feel like we let Chris down. Chris says, "Do you guys have a cut of that backflip combo he does after a TD?" We don't. Ooh, um, I know exactly what he's talking yeah, about sick. too, it's because a it's a signature. I yeah, mean, that's our fault, Chris. We failed. We better see that from him too in his first Bills touchdown. I feel like we let the people down. We should probably end the stream. This is pretty embarrassing. I'm, um, Definitely oh, awesome comment. Kendall, you're not going to know what this is, but RJ says that flip he does remind me reminds me of AEW's Pac top rope finisher, the red arrow. Yes, but he's a bad guy now, so it's the black arrow. Oh, nice tie-in. Nice connection. Look at what we're doing here. We're having fun. 
We're having fun. Oh, and Chris Zane, coming tomorrow morning to the Cover One YouTube <gasps> preview. Hashtag foreshadowing. Hashtag <laughs> building the anticipation. Well done. But yes, good addition um, for the Buffalo Bills. Kendall and I were talking last night um, before the Bills got Naheem Hines. We were talking about potential targets and this and that. And Kendall, you and I both like Naheem Hines. So I wouldn't say that we're you know, over the moon, awesome plug, Chris saying, watch the cover one shorts feed. Chris uh, does tremendous work for us uh, for yes. cover one in terms of the shorts that he produces, his video production, the quality, um, what he chooses to put in, the content, just everything is top notch. So, yes, check out that cover one shorts feed uh, for all of Chris's uh, fantastic work. Nice, mm -hmm. nice plug, Chris. Way to plug, way to plug your ish <laughs> right here on the show. Well done. Um, but, yeah, good signing for the Buffalo Bills. Somebody who has, again, another dynamic that at the end of the day, it's another tool and another weapon. Yep in the holster and arsenal for Josh Allen and this Bills offense, it's never a bad thing to add more weapons for your quarterback and for your offense. So shout out to him. And again, wasn't really giving up a lot. Late round pick and Zach Moss. Moss wasn't finding work on the field. It's an objective upgrade. It is. You know, conditional fair. six, Zach Moss for Hines. It's an objective upgrade. No one can really argue that. Is it? Is it Kareem Hunt? No, but it's an no. upgrade from Zach Moss. Very fair. Very fair. Um, Pop saying, will, will Hines be the returner over Shakir? He's got more NFL production. I at bet point, on it. It's I a fair bet question on it to at ask, this point. Um, especially if we know that whoever the primary punt returner and kick returner is, the Bills don't like to use them a lot in any other role. Mm -hmm. See Andre Roberts. So if they do want to incorporate Shakir more, maybe it's like, well, now we can put Hines back there because yeah. we, we want to put Shakir more in the slot or any type of role. Um, I think I think the jury is out on that. I, me personally, I would put Hines over yeah, Shakir, same. and I love Khalil Shakir back there. But Hines has genuine production. He's averaged 11.8 yards per return. Granted, his first year returning punts was a little skewed. He only returned two, um, and they were they were huge gains. So that affects the average for his yeah. career a bit. But he's got two punt return touchdowns. He's electric. He's explosive. I would put him there um, at punt returner. Real quick as well, another addition today. The Bills brought back Dean Marlowe. Kendall, any thoughts on Marlowe? Connor asks, uh, can you guys talk about him? What he brings as a backup, especially how he's different than Neil. I have some thoughts. Um, but I want to give you the floor in case you have anything. I mean, the, first and foremost, I think the main thing is just getting depth. Right now, the Bills have three healthy safeties. I mean, that that's really the big and it, thing. And is, are you counting Poyer in that? <laughs> yeah. So then, like, yeah, yeah. two and a half healthy So, safeties, so that's maybe? kind of the thing. It, it's like if one were to go down, you have two safeties, and those safeties are Jaquan yeah. Johnson and DeMar Hamlin. So more than anything, I think this move is – a sign of familiarity. It's bring mm -hmm. that guy in as depth, but he's also familiar with what we do here. He's He's been mm -hmm. coached by Leslie Frazier and Sean McDermott. He understands the system. He's contributed meaningful downs in this system. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think you're really going to skip a beat in terms of if someone were to get, someone were to get injured, of course, knock on wood, you know, he, he would be a serviceable depth replacement. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're missing a whole lot there. Um, different than Neil. I mean, I don't even remember the last time Neil has played. No, safety. I think Neil is so fully that's the out main the thing, right? Bracket at this point. I don't yeah, even. He's... Yeah. So that that's the thing. Is, it's just like he he's different from Neil in the sense that I don't know he's if he's going to have a special teams impact like that. He's an actual yeah. safety. Probably won't be playing like eh, he could be the nickel or excuse me, the dime corner in this yeah. system. Whereas maybe Neil might have been the dime corner. Yeah, exactly. Like that might be the change. Like he could usurp Neil as the big nickel. So. That that's about the best comparison I could do relating him to Serena. He's a big, bigger guy, bigger frame, length, size, smarts, knows where to be, and that at the end of the day, that is, I don't want to say number one, but that's a super important piece for this defense and Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier. It's the reason why Levi Wallace, despite not being big or strong or fast, was so successful in this defense and so trusted by Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier because Levi Wallace was where the coaches and where the players expected him to be time and time again. I think Marlowe is in that camp. You know, maybe potentially we see some of those three safety looks come back. RJ, I see you answering or, or asking that question. Potentially, maybe. But I think this is more of just you got to put some reinforcements into that group. You have to add some stability and some functional depth. And why not bring a guy back who saw some success here, who has familiarity in the scheme, in the system, is well-liked in the locker room, is well-liked by the coaching staff. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that this isn't like, you know, I, again, I'm not saying Connor, you're saying this, but it's not like, oh man, they got Jeremy Chin. What does this mean now? But they no, traded a, a seventh guy rounder for the guy. correct. <laughs> He's going to be backup depth. He can start in a pinch. He yep. might have some special package use potentially in the game. Mm -hmm. 
but he's he raises the floor of your depth and your the back foundation is, is set it should never drop below yes. the ceiling of dean marlow yes. at this point because if something happens that. my thought is poyer's going to miss some kind of time not long term maybe a week maybe two maybe three but and if again, that has to happen but if better. it did before it's Hamlin and Jaquan Johnson. Then what are you doing? Is it Cam Lewis going into safety? Is right, it right. is it is it Saran Neal? Like what are you doing now? You got that other guy. You've got that piece. Kind of answers that um, a little bit there potentially. Um, wanted to grab this question real quick from Chris as we start to transition to Bills Packers film. Chris saying, does Kareem Hunt have that deep ball over the shoulder catch in his game? I can't remember seeing him do that like Hines can. I think that's I'm actually like going back to Chiefs days. You know I think I, mean? I don't know if he's ever really had the opportunity to make an yeah. exact play like that. Hines is a good receiving running back. Um, and so is Hunt as well. But I think Hunt, Hunt is, offers yeah. a lot more as a runner as well between the tackles outside it's of the more tackles. More of the fully balanced, oh, like there is no of, weakness to okay. his game, but Hines is that, you know, if you're, if you have like the skills chart where like it goes to where strengths there's are. There's a like, big peak for yes. Hines, whereas, you know, Hunt's well, got Hunt that perfect circle. <laughs> Correct. Well, well said, very well said. Um, not the knock Hunt or Hines, but no. I see them yeah. as different a little bit. Um, but again, that makes sense because Hines is being brought in for a very particular and specific reason. Good questions. Good energy. Good atmosphere. Yeah, Welcome to Buffalo, killing it. Mr. Naheem Hines. We know he's watching tonight. Probably. Definitely. Most oh, definitely. Of course. Of course. So welcome. We're excited to have you. We'll see what happens as uh, the season moves forward. You know, he's got every opportunity to potentially play this weekend. That's already been reported. So we'll see if he suits up against the Jets, if they have any packages built in for him. And we'll see what happens. 